Today is Saturday, April 8, 2017. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor Game Changers Week 5. That's right. It's time to, well, given the circumstances, it's time to mourn for some. And for others, it's a time for celebration. It's a mixed bag with the Listener Feedback Show this week. That's good. Yeah. We got a full spectrum of discussion points to cover. Got some commiserating and hopefully help some of these folks work through this so we'll get ready for the week six and the excitement that's going to bring. Let's get started. First up, we got a call from Pete. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. Pete from Boston here. And I got to say, long live Queen Sandra. Long live Queen Sandra. Woo! Long live the queen. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. No more. I am the queen. I give her props. Odds were stacked against her. She made it to almost every tribal and almost made the merge. When you win twice, that's saying something. But wow, what on earth was Ty Trang thinking about? Props, by the way, for finding two idols, just like Poverty, Russell, James, but Ty Ty, someone got to put duct tape on your crazy mouth. My goodness, that's going to get you nowhere, my young lad. I mean, really, Zeke, Sarah, Andrea, Ozzy easily could have flipped the script and blindsided him with two idols. My goodness. And to throw a wrench in the whole plan, I mean, I really thought Sandra was going to end up staying. And, and I still don't get how how how, uh, how the Ozzy thing never worked out. Something must have been said that we didn't get to see, guys. you got to tell me what you you saw, because Viner and Sandra were the only ones that voted for Ty. Everyone else, including Ty, v- uh, voted for uh, Sandra. So something doesn't add up here, but it was a great tribal, nevertheless. And let me talk about the other team. We got Cole Pepper and Troy's in as the only guys there. That could be very interesting, as you have two older guys from different walks of life, though, remember, coming together. That could be big with Sierra Dawn there. Remember guys because um, I saw this on ET Canada Sierra and Troy's in had a pregame alliance and we'll see how, how it works out for Haley and Aubrey and all and Michaela and all these other girls Debbie gets luxury. She's on a boat. She gets comfort all the food and drink she could have and gets a date with Cochran. But man when he was talking with Debbie it's like talking to the brick wall though Man, because Debbie got no strategy and does what she wants. And he gave her one an advantage, and she chose the one I hate, the double vote, because that never works. Ty, it didn't work. Dan Foley, it didn't work. It's not going to work for Debbie. To me, she could have done better if she had a challenge advantage, or even maybe the fake idol might have did her well. Who knows? You don't know what you're going to get with Debbie. I wish she was caught and an Aussie on Exile. That would have been nuts. But I'm digging this season, guys. Getting real close to the merge. I don't know what's going to happen, as probes keep saying. Woo! And take care. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Pete. You stick by your assessment? You think the extra vote was still probably her best choice? That's what I would have picked, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, even after you had some time to think about it? Yes. Yeah, I still think it will probably have been better for Even her to though, do the, uh, the advantage for the immunity challenge. We were wrong from the uh, recap show. They did say, when we went back and rewatched, mm-hmm. they did say it was for the immunity challenge. Yep, we weren't clear so on that, that when we did the recap. So that would have gave me a little more pause. But That's why I was asking. I still think that was more short 
term. I might have chosen that one, but I don't, I don't think How's so. How's an extra vote not a short term? Because you could hold it till later on. Okay. The the with the uh, advantage would have been event, to the right? next. Yes, mm -hmm. but you could carry it out until later in the game if you felt like you didn't need it. Mm -hmm. yet so it's something you policy. can carry forward the advantage was for the next challenge the next immunity jet but either one i think would have been good but i still don't think when you do something for the tribe that doesn't buy you a whole lot it buys you a momentary gratefulness and then they could i don't think it would vote be you for out that. the very next day i wouldn't look at it that way right i'm looking at it like she got a pass on this immunity i mean on this tribal council and it's a way to give you a better shot at getting a pass on another one. So it potentially just gives her extra bonding time. Possibly. Right? That's why I thought it had more value It in doesn't that mean they're going to win just because they have an advantage, huh? You're acting just like, like it it's a guaranteed win, but no, it's I'm, not. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm I would like to see if I could be, this is, this is a game changer's season, I would like the opportunity to be the first one to use it. Where it does to affect, help. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it does affect the game. Mm -hmm. So that's another instead of just being a quick exit for you. Yeah, I see that as an advantage. You have the opportunity to make it work where no one else has. The odds are against you, but yeah, they could be in the challenge too. So. Yeah, but yes, I would. I would still do that. Actually, Sandra said that was the only choice as far as she was concerned too, mm -hmm. and so did Sister Nina. Yeah. Oh, I and thought you the, said. Uh, thought you said Cochran too. Yeah, and Cochran. They all thought it was was the best. Better choice. Yeah. They're wrong. Next up, we got an email from Sarah. Yeah. Sarah from Hamul. Hi, Joanne, Stacy, and all the awesome super fans. I want to start off by thanking you both for your recap last week, especially regarding Debbie's crazy tantrum. I was nodding in agreement with both your thoughts. That's good. Also, my goodness, that was the best cover of Day Man ever. Woohoo! Well, thank you there very much. you go, baby. <laughs> I didn't even know if anyone knew what I was doing. I was wondering to myself, how do I high five a podcast? Charlie Day would be so proud. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> some quick do Elvis. Quick some quick fire thoughts from this week's episode. Yikes, right away my USB Aubrey is finally getting airtime and I worry that means she's going home soon. Surprise, Ty found another idol. Hopefully he doesn't tell anyone about it for once drop your buffs this might be the shakeup that helps aubrey gain some power they can't honestly be sending debbie to exile island with her fragile mental state three gay men together sounds like a fun new cbs sitcom spin off anyone hashtag giddy up debbie's imaginary pony should show up and remove her from this season already so troy and brad are male bonding but five is more than two shouldn't they be appreciating those women a bit more uh-oh zeke is targeting sandra does that mean he's going home to Tonight. OMG, double idol, Ty, like my favorite anchorman Ron Burgundy said, I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. I'd like to book my next vacation for an exile boat cruise. My aunt had to explain who Cochran was since I'm not a seasoned super fan. She told me he is a bit like male Aubrey but nerdier. Ah, Survivor, bringing families together for learning adventures. OMG, he took the words out of my mouth about Debbie. I love Cochran immediately. Sorry for not knowing who he was before now, guys. Not surprised Debbie took the extra vote. I would have chosen the challenge advantage to butter up my new tribe. This challenge looks awful. I can hardly pull myself through sand after a day at the beach. Varner might get a hernia if he's not careful. He did look like he was struggling, didn't he? In the words of Pete from Boston, woohoo for mana. I think immunity is nice, but you know... They're really celebrating because they won't be getting Debbie on their tribe. Come on, we all knew Ty would open his mouth and ruin things. He's good at climbing, finding idols, and blowing up everyone's game with his paranoid oversharing. Oh my gosh, Sandra, I finally got a vote off point. That's all from me. I'm looking forward to the divided responses from everyone regarding Sandra's departure this week. You anticipated that correctly. Till next time. Thanks, Sarah. Next up, we got a bit of a song from Nicola. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's always cold when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. And I miss, I miss, I miss, I miss, I miss my Sandra. I miss, I miss, I miss, I miss my Sandra. Oh! 
yellow and her torch was snuffed and she's gone away i'm sad she's gone the queen is gone long live the queen i really don't have anything else i'm just sad i'm glad she lasted so long oh, hopefully i'll be better by next week take care guys Oh, enjoyed that. Good job, Nicola. <laughs> Next up, we got a call from Courtney. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. This is Courtney from Gainesville, Florida. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I was really, really super sad. Sandra is, has always been my all-time favorite player, and to watch her work her magic, it was just so exciting to watch her go from week to week, surviving the tribal and wondering how is it possible that nobody knows how she plays. Oh, so yes, she was being arrogant, but she is the queen. So there. So yeah, no, I was, I had a pity party after she was voted out last night, but she did go gracefully, but that did not keep me from being sad about it. I think the Mana tribe is crying because maybe they got letters or, yeah, I I thought initially it was going to be like letters from home and they're just, saying how hard it is to be away again, far away from their family. I would have chosen out of the, the advantage options. I would have chosen the option, if I were Debbie, I would have chosen the option to give my tribe an advantage just because she's, yeah, she needs she needs all the social assistance as possible because she's about as engaging as a wall to me because it's always her talking about herself. Debbie's chances, if she takes Cochran's advice, she's probably going to be okay because she's a great shield for anybody else because they can always just go to her erratic behavior and say that's evidence that you don't want to vote for her. Varner, he'll probably recover because he's on a tribe that I, I think Zeke and Ty, I think they like him. They, they tried on purpose to keep him out of the loop with the Sandra vote out, but I think that they do, they do like him. Zeke right now to me is playing the best. I think he has an advantage because nobody really knows how he plays, how well he knows the game. So I think he's playing the best and I think that Ozzy is next. Even though I love him, I am ready to see him go because doggone it, he let the girls kind of talk him out of thinking about Sandra as an option to not vote for last night. So I hope that everybody's having an awesome week, and I'm super duper excited to hear everybody else's feedback. Survivor Nation rock. Love you all. Bye. Thanks, Courtney. Great job on your first feedback. Excellent work. Next up, we got an email from Nancy in Buffalo, New York. Greetings, Joanne and Stacy. This is my first time offering listener feedback. Another and one. Yeah. All I have to say about this season is yowza. After coming off last season's outstanding entertainment, when I saw this current season's preview, I was not excited at all. Boy, was I wrong. The twists and turns that the show's producers have woven into Game Changers has kept me on the edge of my seat and clamoring for more after each episode. Me too. This past episode was no different. Sandra's demise was only a matter of time, and we have to give her kudos for staying in the thick of things this long. Although at Tribal Council, I thought for a brief moment she might pull off avoiding the inevitable. Now, on to Exile Island, or should I say, the Royal Caribbean Exile Island cruise. Debbie was the perfect castaway to go there. Between her overconfidence and quirky mood swings, How could you go wrong? After all of that good food, relaxation, great advice from Cochran, and three choices for an advantage, I give her about five minutes with her new tribe before she starts spilling all the Exile Island beans. (laughs) Well, you know what they say about a leopard being unable to change its spots. Well, and Debbie's known for her leopard bikini. That's right. Swimsuit. (laughs) Debbie could never change, even for a million bucks. What makes Survivor even better for me is listening to your podcast each week while I'm at the gym. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your old married couple squabbling over (laughs) each aspect of what happened that week is a source of utter enjoyment and is the icing on the cake for each episode. Thanks for all the time and effort you put into bringing us this precious jewel. Thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. Since this season is called Game Changers, how about letting that thing spill over by occasionally putting your podcast on Facebook Live as you record it? What a treat that would be for all of us. I would be so it would, it, be. It would be so entertaining to see the looks on your faces as you banter with each other <laughs> about strategies and intentions. Well, that's about it for my first official survivor feedback. Thanks again for all you do. All right, and thank you, Nancy. Good job. Yeah, good job. 
You and Courtney did excellent there on your first time. As far as Facebook Live, no. <laughs> okay. Stacy was ready. He's, oh, I'll have to check that out. And I'm like, Do you go right ahead. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, the queen here is spoken. So, unfortunately, <laughs> Nancy, you'll just have to He's like, imagine. Not even once. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, imagine what it looks Think, like when oh, we're Lord going no. at it. Thanks again. All our all our signals and faces and this and that. Mm -hmm. and, yes. <clears throat> They'll just have to use the theater of the mind. Next up, Rhonda's back. <laughs> That's probably Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, everyone. It's Rhonda from Portland. I'm back. I still haven't quite caught up, but I know everything that happened. And I just want to say that I am multitasking right now. I have a kitten, tiny little tabby kitten, sucking on my finger while I am recording my feedback. So let's have a collective. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to make this quick since I'm not fully caught up. Caleb going out just proves that not only is he a terrible big brother player, but he's a terrible survivor player, and I am not sorry to see him go. Malcolm going out was... Still haven't watched that episode. Shocking and sad. Survivor's not fair, but... Uh, Boy, that was unfair. And I was live in the Facebook group from Mexico while that was happening. And it was so funny because during the tribal council, I was trying to figure out who was going out or, or who had been voted out. And for a good 10 minutes, I could not figure out who had been voted out because all the comments were just, oh no, oh my God, wow, best tribal ever. Oh no, I can't believe that just happened. Wow, oh no, that's, wow, wow. Oh my goodness, that happened. It was so funny. And then, oh JT, um, whoo, boy. Boy, Steven's a good player, isn't he? And JT's not a good player. And then last week, what can I say? I, that was sad. That was really sad, and I feel like that, that entire episode was, was really like a eulogy to Sandra, and everyone says that her, she didn't deserve her two wins. I, I hope is, is proven wrong by now, because she's really a fantastic player, and it's amazing that she got as far as she did. And that's all I have to say about that. Can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say, and looking forward to next week, which I have no idea what's going to happen. Thanks for the recaps and everyone's feedback, and I'll talk to y'all next week. Bye-bye. Great to have you back, Rhonda. Thanks for including the picture of the little kitten there with yes. your feedback. Was what a like cutie. Bonus in her feedback this week. Next up, we got a call from Samantha. This is Samantha, a.k.a. Survivor Rocks from Texas. This season of Survivor just keeps on delivering week after week. Now, I was pleasantly surprised to see one of my faves coming in on the boat like a breath of fresh air, an ocean breeze, none other than John Cochran. I don't think that Captain Debbie's chances are any better, and Cochran's assessment of Debbie was spot on. Now, I was hoping that Debbie would have the real Exile Island the true hardships of Exile Island, because, well, I just don't like Debbie. Now I would have chosen the extra vote as well. But that fake Hidden Immunity Isle kit looked pretty interesting. Ty needs to go. Andrea is right. He's a little weasel and he just cannot be trusted. I'm disappointed that Sandra's gone. She lit up the TV screen and was on fire this season. I was hoping that Ty would go home with two idols in his pocket. And Tribal Council was amazingly crazy again. I thought that Ty was going. I do think that Varner can recover and I hope that he does. At least make the jury this time. It's been a sweet ride, a real pleasure getting to see Sandra again. All hail to the queen, survivor Sandra Diaz Twine. Thanks, Samantha. Next up, we got an email from Mikey Bear in New Jersey. Hi, Joanna and Stacy. The queen is dead. Long live the queen. I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm super bummed that Sandra is gone. And I have to say, I fell for the edit because when I saw the first two votes, I actually thought Sandra pulled it off and that Ty was going home with two idols in his pockets. Now I'm sure there are a ton of Sandra detractors who are thrilled she got voted off, but I'm not one of them. She was fantastic TV. She's a great survivor player and will always be the queen to me. I love the way she stayed calm throughout her time on the new Mana Tribe, and she presented her case in a brilliant manner, so much so that people almost bought into what she was saying. The confessionals by Andrea, Sarah, and Ozzy where they said, Sandra brings us a good point, and they express how she almost sucked them in, says a lot about how well Sandra plays the game. 
and when she was voted out, she handled her exit with class. As much as it makes me crazy to watch Ty try to play the game, he does have his moments of brilliance where he actually impresses me. For him to have for the foresight to check his new camp for an idol in the same place that he found his last, that was impressive. I'm surprised that Jeff Varner truly thought that he and Sandra were safe. That was naive. I agree. I also thought it was funny how Brad and Troyzan pretended like this was the first time that they had met one another. Come on now, who are they kidding? I do think it was a great thing for Troyzan to wind up on the same tribe with Brad. I think they might wind up playing the JT and Steven of this season. Exile was interesting. I thought it was a great twist to what everyone expects of Exile Island. While I'm far from the biggest Cochran fan, I am okay with him being out there over Russell or Boston Rob. I think the whole scene gave a different insight into Debbie. Yes, she put on the appearance of her being fine and in control, but when the advantage was presented to her, the walls came down and she became vulnerable. Maybe that's why she might appear to be crazy. It's because she's trying to hide her vulnerability. But she's just as vulnerable and emotional as the rest of us. It was a nice scene to watch. Next week, it looks like Ozzy might be in trouble, and I hope that's not the case. I don't know if I can handle two back-to-back -back weeks of players that I like going home. Talk to you next week. Thanks, Mikey Bear. I think that's been a struggle for a lot of folks this season, watching some of their favorites disappear early. Next up... It looks like we got a Pete fan here. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, this is Pete from Boston. I gotta say, woo, woo, baby. No, actually, this is Darren from Springfield. I just always wanted to do that. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, I've been listening to your podcast for about two and a half seasons. I really enjoy it. I work a night job, so it helps pass the time away. But also because I work a night job, I... Don't get to see the new episodes until the Thursday afternoon, the day after. So I have to avoid spoilers at all costs. Uh, I'm also a first-time JSFL player this season. I'm not doing terrible. But I am one of those people who was both sad and excited to see Sandra go. Excited because, man, the arrogance was just getting to me. And sad because, well, she was my USB. So... Yeah, there goes that. Well, you know, about this episode, I have to say that at first, I agreed with Stacy. I thought it was a brilliant idea for Ty to, to pull off the wood and, and break it up. But then later on, I thought, you know, if he made a fake idol, that would be the perfect place to bury it. Because if somebody found the clue, man, that would sure make your fake idol look real. If it was buried in a spot where a real one was, if somebody happened to stumble upon the clue. Eh, but oh well, opportunities missed. Well, and then like Stacy said, Ty is a... Uh, Forrest Gump, he's not a small man. Oh, well, I'm going to have to say uh, the queen stays the queen. Adios. And hey, Pete, no hard feelings. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I'm out. Oh, I think Darren's right. That would have been brilliant. Yeah. I would have taken it to the next level. I like that idea. Maybe someone will store that away and we'll see it in a future season. Good job, Darren. Next up, we got a call from Joel. Hi, Joe and Stacy. It's Joel from the Outback. No, not the region in Australia, but the original Outback Steakhouse that started here in Tampa. And I'm going to have lunch in honor of Sandra. I'm just sorry to see her go. And I guess the only thing she really could have done was try to convince Ty to give her one of his idols. But everyone had to lose. It's only a game. And uh, we'll see what happens next week. Have a good night. All right, Joel, you have a big blooming onion in honor of Sandra there. <laughs> Next up, we got a call from Marla and Sarah. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla. And this is Sarah. I have my voice back. Hooray! Yay. We have actually not watched Survivor yet, but we what? wanted to tell you about a game we have called Square Up, which you can buy, and it teaches you how to do slide puzzles. Two people play side by side, and you try to make the same pattern. It's very stressful. It is very stressful. So it teaches you how to deal with the stress of having to do a slide puzzle on Survivor if you're interested in going on Survivor someday, which Sarah is. We hope all is well with you. We hope you have a great week. Joanne and Stacy. thanks for all you do. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, we're thrilled you have your voice back, Marla. And I 
checked out the link that you sent, and I'll include it in the show notes to where you can find the game on Amazon. I think that's great you're doing the practice, and if you have a smartphone, like Zeke said, uh, I went and downloaded one right after hearing him say that. I'd played with them before. I just hadn't put one on my my phone since I last got a new one. Um, And a great little thing you can do is you can grab the logo for this season. Some of the slide puzzles will let you use pictures right out of the gallery on your phone. Hmm. So you can just load a picture up on your phone and then choose it for the slide puzzle. And you can do the one that the survivors did this season just like that. It's another way you can practice too. And it's fun to do that with like a picture of your cat or your dog or something like that. Or some scene you're familiar with and you, you see... What it must be like when it's like, yeah, I, kn- I know what the logo looks like, and I know that scene, and then it gets scrambled, and you're like, wait a second, where's the left corner? Where's the, you know, where's the upper left corner? Where's the upper right corner? Surprised you didn't do that and, with a picture of my face. You know, I hadn't done that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try that next. Thanks again, Marla. Next up, we got an email from Brandon in Brooklyn. Wow, what an episode! All I have to say is. Long live the queen. I love the season of Sandra playing hard and being bold. However, she didn't win Survivor playing that way. I will miss her, and I wished she was going to the merge. I think Varner is in trouble next week if his tribe loses. They won't vote out Ty, and besides, he has two idols. And Debbie is crazy, so why waste your voting your time voting her out? I'm getting annoyed with Ty. I can't believe Ty found two idols in the same location on different tribes. Didn't Survivor say they they were uh, going to hide idols in different locations? Yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Troy Zan had to find his idol at an immunity challenge, and Ty can find his new idols by the water well pouring water and digging underneath the sign. Guys, I can believe I'm going I, I can't. can't believe I'm going to say this, but the person who I think is doing great and is setting themselves up once the merge starts is Brad Culpepper. He's aligning himself with people that have idols or advantages. I don't believe for a second that Brad didn't uh, talk to Troy Zan before the game started. I think Brad has gained Troy Zan's loyalty. There are three idols between Troy Zan and Ty. Sierra has her advantage that she can use at Final 13 or Final 6. Debbie has gotten an advantage for an extra vote. If Brad can find a way to convince Debbie that he needs her and she needs him, it will be checkmate. For the rest of the cast this season. Interesting. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about it that way. I'm curious to see when the merge happens and who is going to target who. I think Ozzy will be a huge target at the merge. I can't wait for next week. So uh, what Brandon's working out there is like idle degrees to Brad Culpepper, right? Like six mm-hmm. degrees to Kevin Bacon. So he's got connections. I like that. That's that's pretty yeah, astute. Yeah, I hadn't really looked at it quite like that, yeah. Brandon. He's Good got job. A, got a connection to all these. I like your theory there, except the one about Varner going. Didn't like that one quite as much. <laughs> you know that's most likely this week. I saw that. You that, know that, right? That is referenced frequently in the feedback. Oh, okay. I'm just not choosing to agree with it at this point. Varner will find a way. I have him as making the merge, you know. Next up, we got a call from Drew and the Hooligans. Hey, Drew and Stacey. Hey, everyone. This is Drew. See, listen now. What's your name? Daddy. What's your name, babe? We're here to do another Saturday morning recording. I think these guys are my new... Daddy, what's your name? My name is Drew. Did you know that? Yeah, you're still daddy. Yes, I'm still daddy. I think these guys are my new cohorts. They've been with me every week so far this season. Please don't mind my voice. I think I might have caught something through the airwaves while listening to the uh, last listener feedback show. Mm -hmm. So it's not too bad, just kind of croaky. I'm actually singing at a church thing later this morning. So I hope that I can clear out my voice before then. But we do have some quick feedback to leave. This was another great, interesting, crazy week. I don't dislike Sandra. I think she's fine and she amuses me and I've never been sorry she won. But I also wasn't sorry to see her go just because, you know, it was inevitable and um, is a good move by everyone involved. But I will say, I was disappointed because I was just hoping it would be Ty because that was just nuts. I don't know. It's like he's meant to play this game only because he can find idols. But you know what? Who can't find these idols? There's always an idol. It's an Oprah thing. You get an idol. I think we really should just do the everyone gets an idol because you get an idol, you get an idol, everyone gets an idol. They don't mean anything. 
You should just always assume that someone has an idol and change your plans accordingly, okay? It's just really annoying. I'm I'm with everyone, especially I think Paul was saying they're just losing their luster. They don't mean anything. I mean, of course, they mean something because they're still an immunity idol, but finding them is no big deal. It's just really frustrating. Anyway, let me be really quick. Exile Island, I thought that was actually a really fun twist. It was really funny to see Debbie so into that, but I didn't really care about the visit. I don't know. It just didn't really do much for me. It was funny to see her kind of still putting up her front, but then sort of break down eventually. You get exhausted, I think, putting on such a character all the time, and I think she just finally had to break down a little bit and show some humanity, so that was refreshing, but I don't know, I'm still just not a huge fan. And then the tie business, he cannot keep his mouth shut. I can't believe he hasn't told everyone every single time he finds an idol. Yeah, all I really had to say this week was Ty and Sandra. I mean, that's probably what everyone has to say, but... I guess they're kind of tied for my loser of the week. If Sandra could have pulled that off at the end, I would have been amazed. And I actually really thought she did. So you know what? Never mind. It's just tie. Winner of the week? I don't even know. Gosh, I guess it... I don't know. Aubrey for recognizing, for being so pragmatic about the game, not getting too emotional. Maybe Ozzy for squeaking by. Or Jeff, because he's still there. Also, as a side note, I don't think that Varner has ever once mentioned in three seasons that he's gay. So that was kind of a... I don't know, a little bit of surprise. I guess some people say it right away and some people don't really mention it. So that just sort of seemed to come out of nowhere. Speaking of him, I think he can recover. I think he's actually playing pretty well, but I don't think he can recover for long because I think that he'll be able to, you know, finesse his way into getting rid of maybe Ty or someone. But I think Ty is in big trouble, but for some reason he just doesn't be in danger. Oh, and I was just saying while he was looking for idols and stuff in his nasty droopy drawers, I was like, why don't they have their swimsuits yet? And then just as they went to the challenge, Julie was like, hey, look, there's his swimsuit. I said, oh, I guess he just doesn't want to wear it. But then sounds like they just barely got them, which is nice. Two weeks in, poor Sandra apparently had some real issues with her undies. I'm looking forward to next week because I really hope Ty goes soon because he, he just bugs me. Like, when he started talking right in front of Jeff, I was like, what are you doing? Anyway, sort of what he does, right? Anyway, that's all for us. Baby, do you have anything to say? Bye. Charlie, say bye. Bye. Okay, talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. <laughs> yep, bye. <laughs> Excellent. Good job, Drew. Good job, hooligans. You know, the one of the most disappointing things about Sandra leaving this soon is I would have loved to see her on the jury. Yeah, I mean, that's a theme who, that we're going to hear in the listener feedback this week, too. Uh, but it must be on the audios because I haven't heard it. <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking, who's who would be more entertaining on the jury, Ty or Sandra? Possibly Sandra. She might edge so. him out in that particular case. And she hasn't had the experience, so that would have been a little added extra something-something. Next up, we got a call from Kenny. Hello, guys. It is Kenny from Dallas. I am sad to see Sandra go, one of the more colorful players in Survivor history. I'm probably the best player of all time. The fact that she made it to day 16 is, I think, truly amazing. Sarah was pretty insightful to explain to people who don't who think Sandra's just very lucky as to how she was able to win the first two times, that she is extremely strategic and puts you very much at ease and almost puts you under her spell. I think the next game for Sandra has to be in an all-winner season where people will be on equal footing with her and they wouldn't be gunning for her automatically. I guess if they have an all-winner season, they can leave people like Fabio out and Vesepia and uh, Natalie White. Well, it was good to see Cochrane come back. I've always enjoyed him. And it makes you wonder when Debbie got the lack of a buff so that she was on Exile Island, whether they completely changed the nature of Exile Island that it perhaps really was a kind of a harsh place, but they felt that Debbie would completely go off the deep end if they sent her to Exile Island. So they had to put her on a yacht, well-stocked with food, where she also gets a reward, and Cochrane comes to act as her analyst. I hope for her sake that she settles down some. Well, it looks like Zeke is worried about Ozzy. I think that Ty is a great idol finder, but he's terrible with being fidgety, and he makes me so nervous. I want to vote it out. All in all, an interesting season. I wish some of the former winners were still there. I'm pulling for Zeke. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, Ty does bring a Hitchcock-like element to watching the episodes. You never know. Like, he's always on the verge of messing something up. (laughs) If he's going to just sort of, you know, mix it all up right in in the middle of a moment before... uh, Intentionally or not? Yeah, I... I don't think a lot of what he does is intentional. I don't think he is aware sometimes of the impact of what he has. And then other times he is. So he has his moments. Thanks again, Kenny. Next up, we got a call from Krista. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. Hey, Survivor fans. It's Krista from the East Bay. 
And oh, I'm so sad. My queen, Sandra. <sighs> oh, I'm sad. But she played a great game. I mean, I really thought that maybe at that tribal that she might have pulled a rabbit out of her hat at that point. I don't know. I was just so hoping that any shred of of hope that it was going to work. Well, who am I going to root for now? Okay, Sari, you're my girl. I love you, Sari. I don't think you have a chance because of your edit, but you're my second favorite all-time player after Sandra, so I'm rooting for you now, girl. I'm really hoping that a women's alliance can come together with all of these bros being voted out. I hope they vote out Ozzy next week and can come together with the ladies. Oh, but I'm so sad. I didn't care at all that Cochran was there. Like, I guess of the people that could have come, I'm glad it wasn't Rupert, for goodness sakes. So that was good. I was bummed I had Debbie as my vote out. And so once she was there, I was like, oh, okay, well, no good for me. But, oh, Sandra, oh, I really thought she could be my, our three-time winner. I thought she could do it. I mean, kind of. It was a sad day for us all here in the Survivor world. Looking forward, still looking forward to the rest of the season. It's a good season. Ty, what is he doing? Who knows? I just hope that someone I love will win this game. Not Brad. Mm. I guess just not Brad. Maybe I'll root for Zeke now. I don't know. There's lots of people I still like and I'll look forward to it. But, oh, Sandra. Queen is still queen, no matter what. Still the only two-time winner. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, one more thing. What we really have been robbed of this season is Sandra on the jury. That's all I have to say. I just wished if she wasn't going to win, please, Sandra on the jury. Ugh, she would have been such a great member of the jury. Oh, okay. Still sad. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, bye. See, I agree. <laughs> yes. Well, I think there's some some more people who might agree with both of no, you, too. okay. Well, you do the we'll, audio. We'll get to that. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. Hi, Joanne, Stacy, and all you Survivor fans. This was another solid episode. Ty had a great idea of trying to find the idol at night because probably no one would have noticed him gone because they were all sleeping. Having found the one idol at the camp was great, but having the same thought over at the other was smart and it paid off really well for him because he now has two idols i don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon when i first heard of exile in this season i thought what everyone else did and that was exile island but no it was exile it was an exile boat what a twist also plenty of food and places to relax must have seemed nice even though you have no idea what's happening back at camp why cochran We knew a mysterious returning castaway was going to appear, but I would have never guessed it would have been him. Out of the three advantages Debbie could have chosen from, I think she probably made the right choice. I would feel safe myself if I had an extra vote when I needed it. Tribal Council was still quite entertaining with the scrambling, but not as insane as when Malcolm left. I knew it was only a matter of time before Sandra left, but I did enjoy cheering for her. I don't think we'll see her play again. This season is still really enjoyable, and I can't wait to see what happens next. My guess right now is that Jeff could potentially be the next gone because he was working with Sandra. Take care. Thanks, Jack. Yep, I think it's natural to think Varner's going to follow her off, but he's just not the threat that she is, and there are lots of other big threats to deal with. You know, I think they had to bring a winner back. It couldn't have been somebody like Rupert because he's never won. Mm -hmm. So it would be like, well, what knowledge do you have to impart? You, you You didn't win. Right. You played how many times and you didn't win, so... You know, I, I think they would discount that. So I think it almost had to be a so that winner. Narrow, narrowed the field, yeah. do you think? Narrowed it down to a winner, mm-hmm. any of the winners. Yeah. And Cochran's Prope's buddy, so it's it, just natural, right? some people pointed out, it took Rob four times. So he's lower on the list than those people who won it in their first time out. Or like Cochran, their second. Yes. Next up, we got a call from Sophie. Hi, my name is Sophie. I live in Texas, originally from London or Essex, the countryside um, from England. But I've been living here for 14 years, and I love Survivor. I just stumbled across it last year and I binge watched nearly every single season. It was just the most amazing thing. I couldn't believe that I'd been missing it all this time. Um, I was wondering if anybody knew how I could get all the seasons for free because Amazon Prime um, only has a few. There's a chunk missing. Um, But I've 
caught up. Um, the first one I actually watched was Tony's season. And I just thought this show was crazy. A uh, lunatic running around and hiding. And, and I, I didn't like the way it was played. I thought that there must be a different side to this game. This guy must be different. And so I went back and I watched it and I found other legends like Russell Hound, who I love. And, and finally, I, I saw Boston Rob. I had heard so much about him. And yeah, he grew on me too. When I saw that Sandra was coming back to Game Changers... I just didn't know what to think. I did not like the way that she played. I thought it was terrible how she treated Russell in burning his hat right before Tribal. And But this season, I have loved her. It's just been absolutely brilliant. I could definitely see in this final Tribal how she won. I really thought that she was going to turn the vote around. I mean, she went out swinging. She was fighting to her death. It was amazing. I really thought in the final tribal that she had convinced everybody to vote out Ty. I thought to be on the safe side, she might vote maybe Ozzy. So that if Ty did play an idol, then somebody else would go home. That's not how it went. I also thought maybe Ty would give her an idol, play an idol for himself, and then everybody do a re-vote. But yeah, she went home and I actually felt sad. My heart was beating, my hands were sweating, and it was really good. This season, I have watched the tribal councils multiple times. So thank you so much for your podcast. It gets me through the day, gets me through the week. I really have been loving listening to everybody's feedback and recognizing people's voices over the last year. This is the first time I'm calling. I don't know, I just thought that I was happy that Ozzy was coming back and Andrea, but that game has been so quiet. So I'm actually enjoying people who I don't know. I haven't seen a season with Varna and I'm actually enjoying him and I didn't really see much of Brad on the season that I did get. I think he kept calm last week with Debbie acting crazy and scary. Oh my goodness, poor Cochran. I can't believe Debbie was like a clean octopus around his neck. It was just so awful, but oh, he was so sweet just tugging her back, but Ugh. Yes, it's no surprise that they brought him back. He's funny, he's sensitive and caring. I originally thought it would be Monica coming back or Russell Hunt, but really Russell wouldn't have any sympathy or empathy for the survivor. And I guess Russell's only coming back if he's playing. So Cochrane was a very sweet thing and Debbie's going to now have this advantage. She could go far. I'm quite liking Zeke, and I hope Andrea gets a bit more involved, but it's been fantastic. Thanks for everything. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, Sophie. It's great to hear from you. Yet another first-time participant in the podcast today. Really cool. Uh, I don't know anything specific about where you can find all the seasons. I think there's folks have shared different places where they could find that kind of thing out on the Internet before, so you might get some help in the Facebook group someone there um but with cbs all access i think you could probably fill in the gaps and since you're a binge watcher you could get by if you couldn't get all the ones that you wanted in the week the first week free trial you could probably certainly get through in a month and that would cost you i can't remember what it was it's like, like seven nine bits. yeah seven seven bucks with ads and then maybe ten bucks without if you want to skip the ads which i recommend thanks again sophie next up we got parker hey it's parker from indiana again i missed uh, a pretty big amount in this episode i'll probably rewatch it but you know why why wait to leave feedback to i rewatch it that's that just makes too much since the outcome, yes, it was amazing. <laughs> and if you've been listening to me this season, you know how happy I am. That's what you get for voting out Tony. Woo! Oh my goodness, it's it's Cochran, it's Cochran. And then they were like, "No, nah, it's not gonna be Cochran." My sister was like, "Well, probably not." And then a pants Cochran. I'm like, "Ha! Woo! Cochran!" So not only did Sandra go home, but Cochran made an appearance. And man, I'm happy. I mean, I'm sad because, you know, it wasn't, it, he's not staying for the rest of the season. But, I mean, it was fun to see Cochran and see Debbie not completely crazy. I, I don't know how well Cochran would have handled that situation if it was crazy heavy. <laughs> I am happy that it's not someone that got voted out. I would love to see him in the rest of the season. Would have loved to see him in the season to begin with. I feel like this is good for Cochran. I just just to make appearances. He should do this every season. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that Sam just got finally got revenge for winning against Russell in poverty. woo Finally. And revenge for voting out Tony and for for uh, winning in the season with, like, pretty much everyone in that season 
except her and maybe like four other people shouldn't have won. Queen has been dethroned and I'm so happy. Now that's one of my goals to on Survivor to win twice so that I can rub it in Taylor's face because she's not the only two time winner, two time player. Ha! Woo! And I'm not going to ruin it by going out again. <laughs> I'm so happy, man. And I really, really, really hope that Varner does not go. But it seems like on the other tribe, the morale is really low. So maybe to lose the challenge and Varner won't go. Hopefully no one I really love goes home next time. And I'll still, you know, keep on going like this and it'll be awesome. But uh, I have my doubts. Maybe the... The endless fan favorites of mine going home will will end. All right, see you guys next time. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Parker was not sad that <laughs> Sandra got voted out. He was saying sad, but I wasn't hearing. Yeah. Sad. Thanks, Parker. <laughs> next up, we got a call from Rajmi. Hello, Joanne and Stacy and all my survivor friends. I was so sad to see Queen Sandra go. Even in her departure, she was amazing. Sandra was doomed right from the time the tribe switched and she went down fighting and fighting very smartly. However, her end seemed so inevitable. Every time a player starts getting a lot of screen time, you know they are going. It seems now Varna doesn't have a chance. The shuffle was just so unfair to both of them. I was really pleased to see John Cochran. The hug between Debbie and Cochran was so very awkward. And I think he'll have nightmares about that hug for the rest of his life. In my opinion, Debbie should have taken the fake idol kit and got more leverage from it than taking the extra vote. It seems like Ty has the Midas touch where idols are concerned. I still really like him, flaws and all. And just on point of the goat business, I'm glad Sandra clarified that. Waiting to hear what everybody else has to say. Bye for now. Thanks, Rajmi. Yeah, Ty does have the Midas touch when it comes to finding those idols. Well, and Debbie said, I don't know if it was an extra clip or what, but she said that she had collected a lot of things during the season. She had mm-hmm. plenty of things to make to a fake make idol. To make a fake idol, yeah. That's stored true. up already. Yeah, good deal. Next up, we got an email from Doris from California. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. First, I want to give a big shout-out to Paul for maintaining the visual roster. It is incredibly helpful since the two tribes to three back to two tribes is a lot to track. And he's managed to convey all that. Oh, in yeah, there. it's awesome. You it's can loaded look at with it. information. Yeah. Totally. I love that too, Paul. Mm-hmm. Good job. I was sad to see Sandra go, although I was tired of hearing Queen stays queen. I was enjoying her gameplay. And with two wins and a 15th place, In 94 days, I would think she is still one of the most effective players in Survivor history. I agree. Mm -hmm. The Mana Tribe looks the strongest and has a great puzzle solver in Suri. So I think Nuku will lose and either send Varner or Ty home. Varner, if the Paganging continues, but if Ty... um, But Ty... But Ty, if Ozzy and others are tired of his inability to keep tribe secrets and wary of his ability to find idols. Finally, I hope that when new new mana and new new nuku merge, <laughs> someone proposes Nanu Nanu as the merged <laughs> tribe name. All right. Oh, I like that. Good job, Doris. A little ode to Robin there. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. Excellent. Next up, we got a call from Jody. Hey guys, it's Jody from Brisbane here. Currently I'm up in Cairns in beautiful tropical North Queensland where it's been bucketing down for two days straight now. I've had a pretty terrible week in more ways than just my pitiful JSFL score. So I nearly lost someone beloved to me a few days ago to suicide and uh, half an hour longer and my world would be a pretty different place at this moment. Depression is a disease like any other. It's common, it's treatable, it's survivable. I'm a sufferer and I'm not ashamed to admit that and to seek help when when it gets me. Anyway, I'm not focusing on what could have happened. I'm determined to help him find his way back and I just wanted to throw some awareness out there and encourage other people to look around them for people at risk and just love them as hard as you can. Okay, enough of that. Back to my favourite game. And Joanne, thanks for the vote of confidence in me, but 
I don't think there's anything false about the sense of security Stacey's getting from my performance in the side challenge. That is pretty much 99% surety and soon my only chance to get off the bottom might be if James defaults. So default James. <laughs> Seriously, I've had Sandra to go the past two weeks and when I finally gave in and try to get a safe point off her, Zeke comes along with a boarding pass. And I know many people have been down on her for ramping up a gameplay and her overt ownership of her moves, but I've really enjoyed her confidence and her clarity of mind. So Debbie, Debbie will be the new cuckoo on new, new, new cuckoo. <laughs> How fun is that to say? This is another massive evolution in the game. There's never before been a single person, not like every single person, sorry, to get booted pre-merge and they're so dominant in either physical ability or strategy or both. It's going to be really, really different getting to the end. So that's pretty interesting. That's about all the thinking that I can muster right now. Thanks, guys, for everything you do. Distraction is truly priceless. I've I've even just been playing, you know, old podcasts over and over just, just to go to sleep, just to have distraction, to um, tear my mind away from the places that it's trying to go about alternate realities. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been great. Anyway, thanks guys. Thank you, Jody. That's a that's a good message to get out there. I've had some similar experiences in my life too. So um, well, I think most good people to, have. It's so. good to acknowledge that and not if we can, whatever we can do to keep it from being such a stigma certainly is a good thing. And Jody, do not give up on uh, JSF. Although we do have some bad news for you. It turns what? out James that was oh. that was just an April Fool's goof yeah. he notified us. Yeah, he's so like, he's "Hey, not I was def- kidding. You guys took me seriously." He's not defaulting <laughs> Jody. <laughs> We're like, oops, we didn't get that. But anyway, you know the season is early yet, and it all the big numbers come at the end. So that doesn't mean anything just because you're in the I really last like place that Jody's right now. ready to make peace with her oh, bottom standing in the JSFL side challenge. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a little sampling of what happens when you do end up <laughs> at the bottom of the JSFL side challenge at the end of the podcast here. So <laughs> Yes, and you should pay attention. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. I hope things get better. We'll keep a good thought for you and your um, your family. Is that family why you're taking friends. voice lesson? <laughs> Next up, we got a call from Carolyn. She's back. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. This is Carolyn. La Reina es muerta. Viva la Reina. I really can't believe it. I never. I mean, I didn't think Sandra would win the entire season. To be fair, I mean, she did have a huge target on her back from day one. Before day one, actually. However, I did. I was hoping she'd at least make the merge, or at least the jury. Can you imagine wonderful jury questions and observations that were being robbed of? And also Sandra Ponderosa. Ah, oh, makes me feel sad that we're not going to see that. But oh well. Very good playing by all concerned. I'm glad they gave her an ovation as she left. She deserved no less. And it was great to see see a great player. Um, the last last one is standing, I believe. Yes, yep. yes, she is. She's the last one standing. She got rid of all of them before her. So I think that's very impressive. And the queen stays the queen. <laughs> it's also been um, interesting hearing her uh, exit interview. She's very gracious about having being voted out. Of course, she knew it was coming, being Sandra and all. But but she told uh, one interviewer that she she was going to like grab someone's hat or stomp out or curse or like a chef or whatever. But she didn't. She took it like a champ. It must have been very hard for her on a lot of levels. But she did it. I really think we're going to lose something by not having her on the show. She's kind of a unique personality. She's an older lady, but she's not crazy like Debbie. Oh, and by by, by the way, if, if you're going to storm off. Storm off. If you're doing angry push-ups surrounded by people, those are not really angry push-ups. Go behind a rock or something. <laughs> so looking forward to seeing how people react to the absence of Sandra for the first time before day 39. Should be absolutely fascinating. Hey, thanks. I'm really enjoying the season so far. I've been a little busy on Saturdays especially, but, <laughs> but I'm really enjoying the season and having a great time. And I look forward to see what everyone's saying. Thanks for all you do. Bye. Thank you, Carolyn. Great to have you back. Next up, we got audio from Jeremiah. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. Hello, Survivor fans. This is Jeremiah Panhorst here, coming a lot earlier than I normally do on a Thursday, but I've got a lot going on this weekend with the Reality Rally here in Southern California that I'm going to. So I wanted to make sure I got some thoughts in real quick. First of all, obviously, the queen is dead. 
I'm very sad to see that, of course. I was extremely impressed with her this season, though. She changed up her game, played a very aggressive style. It was very exciting. Maybe she went a little bit too big. I don't really know. I think she was going to go out no matter what. And for her to last 16 days, that's pretty impressive. I thought she did great. And I certainly would love to see her play a fourth time, just to see. Most likely, the best scenario for her would be to come back if they ever did that all winter season. What about you guys? Would you like to see Sandra play again? I know I'm excited about that opportunity. Now, the other big thing, of course, uh, Exile Island, we had to find out what that was. I was uh, pretty much disappointed. I mean, Debbie being the one to go, and then it was Cochran, which I love Cochran, don't get me wrong, but it the whole thing, I thought it was so awkward. Well, how about that hug? Was that the most awkward hug ever? <laughs> I thought it was so crazy. But yeah, that's like the worst person I have to give advice to is is Debbie. Good grief. Do you guys think she made the right choice though? I kind of lean towards, I think she did make the right choice because the challenge thing would have been the next closest best thing. But then everybody would wonder what like, what else she got, had gotten. I think this is the best thing. Just take the extra vote. If you wind up using it, great. If not, oh well. I think really that is probably the best choice in the end. It's hard to say, but that's that's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. So that was, uh, you know, interesting to see how that got played out. I don't, I don't think we should see this again, though. I mean, <laughs> come on, Exile Island is supposed to be an island, and it's supposed to be miserable to be in. Oh well. I thought Zeke had a really good episode. They kind of seem to give him a lot of the credit. It seems like for getting Sandra out, so that that's something he can put on his sleeve there to to brag about, right? He's looking pretty good. As far as next time on Survivor's concerned, uh, you know, a lot of people have been talking about in the Facebook group. It does seem like everyone's been getting a lot of airtime seems to be going home. I I'm kind of leaning towards probably it's probably going to be Jeff Varner. Jeff Varner's way up there. So I'm thinking, uh, unfortunately, uh, Stacy, I think you're going to lose your USB. I think uh, Varner is going home next week. That's yeah. who I'm putting down for my uh, pick. And uh, that's pretty much it. You guys won't believe it, but I was thinking about who I think might be winning, winning this thing. And Joanne, I think it's Brad Culpepper. Ugh. All right. Well, we'll talk more about that later. You guys take <laughs> care. Until next time, this is Jeremiah from Southern California. Thanks, Jeremiah. I hope you guys have a great time at Reality Rally. Rally. And it looked like it's going to be a fun week with all the activities there. Weekend. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. they did not get the hail we got this morning. Yeah, the wet, the rain, yeah, all the bad weather we've had, yeah. It was Hope pounding nice against the windows. Yeah. So you want to see Sandra play again? Me? That's what Jeremiah's question was. Yeah, of course. We've said that already. Not this, yeah. Yeah, I don't, mm, I want it to be a while. Well, I, I Some distance. would, I think sh- the only way Sandra has any chance at all is for winter season. That I'm assuming she, she had, would come back for winter season. That discussion she had with Tony early on made the most sense. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how she could win again. That's how yeah. I'm not win. sure she would come <laughs> back for anything else. Mm, really? She said she's always eager to come back. Uh, actually, in the um, um, one of the interviews, the one that Rob hosted this week with her on uh, the what's it called? behind the buff or something mm-hmm. like that anyway um she said she next time uh, if they ask her again she would want to know more about it and who was playing she would in other Instead words want to go to hollywood yes. and look around at the hotel and see who else they were interviewing and that kind of thing before she committed she mm. would she might not just openly commit like or she blindly. did this time yeah. yes well, so that's, that's why i'm thinking Maybe not unless it was a winter season or mm-hmm. there were a lot of other winners on there. Yeah, she wants to size up her odds for a change. Yes, yes, before she, yeah, yeah because that Getting was a, a lot smarter. of time away from home, yep. not playing the game, and she for didn't, little reward she didn't this time. enjoy that as much. Right, good deal. Thanks again, Jeremiah. Next up, we got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, the Queen is dead. Long live the Queen. Here's this week's observations. One of the castaways said that Ty finds idols in his sleep. Actually, he found one while they slept. Ty's as twitchy as a bunny. I bet he eats lots of carrots like one. That would explain his seeing the magic idol symbol in the dark. <laughs> I like that. Just when players think they have the answers, Jeff changes the questions. Drop your buffs. When Debbie was first sent to exile, I thought of it as Debbie's overdue timeout. Brad and Troy Zan, founding members of the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Mono chapter. Zeke mustn't be much of a fisherman. Any angler knows that the biggest fish in the pond doesn't always fall for a baited hook, especially a queen fish. Ty can't outwit or outplay 
and I hope he doesn't outlast, but he definitely out idles. No man is an island, but I guess an exile ship is. Exile Yacht was a new and improved version of the Sugar Shack. Debbie has met presidents and prime ministers. Bush baked beans and Winston cigarettes would be my bet. <laughs> That's awesome. Cocker and strategizing on a ship with Debbie was like the old SNL skit where John Lovett's devil stuck Paul Simon in an elevator listening to music versions of his hit songs. Cochran mapped out a strategy, strategy for Debbie. Can she stick to the plan? Debbie might have been better off choosing the tribe advantage. With a probable merge at 13, it would have increased her chances of getting there. For once, Jeff did have something for the losers of a challenge. Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> when Sandra wove her web of words for Ozzy, Andrea, and Sarah, I almost expected her to say, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> Whispering at Tribal seems to be the new in thing. The editors got me. For a moment, I thought Ty was joining James in the Bring Two Idols to Ponderosa Club. Was his alliance trying to flush an idol? I'm glad Sandra won't win for a third time, but I will miss her sass and gameplay. Anyway, that's all I have for you now. Thanks, Joanna Stacy, for all you do. Can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Thank you, Josh. You cracked us up as always. Next up, we got audio from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Well, the inevitable has happened. It was really hard to imagine a third season in which Sandra wins, although I thought that that would have been a fantastic ending and a great story. She went down swinging, and she was a great sport in the end. It really tickled me right there when she begged Jeff not to snuff her torch. I enjoyed watching her again this season. I think she's a great player of Survivor. And if she ever plays again, I will enjoy watching her play again. That tribal council was crazy, though. I really thought that she might have found an angle that she would be able to pull off staying. She gave a fantastic pitch to Ty. She is so persuasive. But, you know, in the end, the fact that everyone still voted the tribe line, they still wrote Sandra's name down. Ty even wrote Sandra's name down. I feel like we didn't see something. I feel like there was some sort of a given there that we were not privy to. And because the votes went down the way they did, I kind of feel like Ty's little meltdown was all really part of the plan. So that just kind of seemed fishy to me. I don't know. I just, it didn't add up. Something that has just kept coming back into my head since I've watched the episode is Exile Island. I think that the Exile Island twist this year is fantastic. The possibilities are just endless as I think about them. If Debbie goes back and blabs that it was a Club Med vacation, that's really going to have an effect on the tribe. If she goes back and says nothing and pretends like she had the worst time in the world, what's going to happen when somebody else goes to Exile Island and realizes that it's not all bad like usual? What's going to happen when that person comes back? And now there are two people that know that Exile Island is actually a place that you may want to go, especially if you're desperate and starving. It still isolates you from others and from the game, but there's going to be a lot of discernment about whether that cost outweighs the benefit of being fed and warm and comfortable even for just a little while. Is Debbie going to just continue to try to go back to Exile Island? Will she sacrifice herself, quote unquote, for the team? If somebody has to go to Exile Island, she could say, oh, I'll go. Don't worry about me. I'll sacrifice for everybody. <laughs> what will happen if that happens? And it gets back to the tribe eventually. This stirs the pot in so many potential ways. I really can't wait to see how Exile Island factors into gameplay and strategy and relationships in this game. I'm fascinated by it. And my last question before I go is, who would you have liked to have seen get that Exile Island benefit and the benefit of talking to John Cochran about strategy. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I would have liked to have seen somebody other than Debbie. Debbie was fascinating to see, but I don't know, what if it was Ozzy that got that? Or Sari? I mean, I've just been thinking of how that would affect each individual player's game. I thought that was a great new twist, too, because I think that John has a lot of good strategy input and would be a good sounding board. Anyway, that's it for me. I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. Bye. Thanks, Jen. I enjoyed all your ideas about Exile Island there. That was in truly interesting to consider. 
Alas, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that was a one-time thing because of the shuffle, because of the odd person out kind of deal. We're not going to get into that circumstance again. But it would be interesting if it did work out that way, that it was a treat and she kept throwing herself <laughs> out there to go like that. That would be funny. Who do you think could have benefited the most? Jen's question. Who would you like to have seen get that time mm. with Cochran? Um, I like the idea of Ozzy talking strategy. Mm-hmm. There's one like obvious and, big one. Uh, Ty. You think I it think could would, help Ty? I, yeah. I don't know because he's wishy washy. <laughs> Depends on who talks to him last. Oh, they but could I have think tightened it, it up. Could have helped. You know, with especially if it ended settle up him. going to, uh, and, and he could have shared that he had those two idols. Yeah. If he had gone on to win or something Sandra like that. Sandra said she would have loved that mm-hmm. to go and talk Well, with I think him. the obvious one's Aubrey because she's referenced Cochran before. So yeah. that, that could have been a big one. That would have been neat to see them working together on it. For me, obviously, I think Varner could have benefited from it. And Sari, those are the three that really stand out for me. And um, Zeke certainly could be in that group also. And then maybe Sarah, Ozzy. I don't know if it would really help Ozzy. I don't know either, but I would have liked to have seen, you know, I think he would certainly have listened, you know, and gone through things. It would have been great for him to... And for us to see how, what Ozzy was thinking. Where he was That's at. That's what I was, yeah. yeah, where is he at in his thinking is why I would like to have seen him go. So I would know what he was thinking. So many of the people this week were just bemoaning the fact that she had to go out there and suffer through that, that it would be interesting if it was a recurring theme for the season, although... You know, Cochran's not going to be there to give someone strategy every time. You said he turned around and flew mm -hmm. right back home, right? He he just yes, yeah. He did a it's turn like and a, burn. A day turnaround. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you notice uh, on the roster that Sari is the only person who's been on all three tribes? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can see that from the colors, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I can see the different colors there. He did a really good job with making them different from each other so that it stands out for yeah, me. Yeah, because you can't usually see the difference. Yeah, it depends on how you do the reds and the greens for sure. But yeah, it does stand out, doesn't it? Thanks, Jen. That was really fun to think about. I don't think it'll happen, but maybe they'll bring it back. It'll make everyone wonder in follow-on seasons what's really going to happen with Exile. Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad? Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul Louisiana here. And first off, I have to say that I like the Sandra who exited far better than the Sandra who played. When I tell people that I've liked her in previous seasons, they don't understand why since she's been so upfront and in everybody's face this time around. Although she was never one to hold back, I respected her, which is something I had a hard time doing this time around. Still, she left on a high note with me so there's that okay so i'll get it out of the way quickly here ty not only did he find the idol before being moved to another camp but he also found a second idol now i won't dwell on it because you already know how i feel about this but come on we have three idols and two advantages out there i will admit that ty showed great restraint in not playing one but wow had he been voted off well I would have loved it. I guess I'm a horrible person, but I really wish Sandra had gotten her way this week. Oh, and have we discussed why Troy Zen was the only player who had to nab his idol in front of everyone? I sure wish Ty had to do the same for his newest one. I don't know. It, it just hardly seems fair. And wow, Cochran's really grown up, and yes, he gave great advice to Debbie. So the question is, has she learned anything from what he told her? She seemed sincere enough, but the entire Exile Island experience was certainly overwhelming for her, and she may not retain much of what he said, so I'm thinking that nothing is going to change with her. Debbie is just someone who can't reel it in or take accountability for her actions. That said, I do believe she picked the correct advantage prize. I wouldn't have hesitated to pick that one myself. So, Debbie doesn't have to worry about Brad for the next few days, so maybe she'll calm down a bit by the time they meet face-to-face -face again, 
if it even happens. Haley's luckily on the opposing tribe as well, and I think she's as big a problem as Brad is for Debbie. Like it or not, as I see it, the woman has some severe jealousy issues towards Haley, and I doubt anything other than a vote-off will fix that. And you just know that at the immunity challenge, both Haley and Brad were saying, we've got to win, otherwise we're stuck with Debbie again. Poor Ty, though. He lost, so he's going to have to interact with her again soon. That'll be fun, I'm sure. So, who goes next? Well, we're down to two tribes, so that should make this easier, wouldn't you think? I'm still lost, though. I guess I'm leaning towards Nuku losing it, and Jeff being targeted since he's the odd man out on that tribe. If that happens, the amount of women to men will be almost doubled, which will make the merge very, very interesting. I hate to come down hard on Jeff, but he really doesn't do well on challenges, and if Nuku loses again, well, I think he's going to take both the blame and the fall for it. So there you go. Take it for what it's worth. I had a feeling a woman would win in this season before it even started, and now I'm feeling pretty positive about that. So everyone take care. Catch you all next week. Bye. Thanks, Paul. I'd say the odds are definitely in your favor. I wouldn't count the men out completely yet because Zeke's gameplay is functioning mm-hmm. about as good as you could hope given that he just turned around for a double. He seems to maybe be doing even better this season than he did his last. We'll see as it goes oh, on. Oh, definitely. I think he's doing better. Though. Yeah. Well, it, they're only, what, 16 days in right now. It's It, it won't take its primary toll on him until, until later. After the merge. Yeah, because yeah, he was there for so long in that Which game Which will mindset. probably be week after... Nick. Right. Yeah, it's soon. That's why I still hold out a little bit of hope, unlike Paul, for my USB Varner. I just because oh, he doesn't Varner's gone this way. He doesn't represent a threat. <laughs> yeah, you could look at him as an easy vote off, but he's he's not a threat and he's a vote and we've heard how well he's been getting along with everyone. True. So, he's got a social game that I think could save him. He's just got to make it through this next cycle, and then he falls off everyone's radar, I think. He's just not hes not who you're going to worry about winning individual immunity by any means. Another point that Paul was making about their being happy that Debbie was not going to come back to their tribe, actually, in the extra videos, Brad was concerned about her welfare. At least that was my interpretation of it. So, several people mentioned that so did sierra too they were hoping it wasn't too bad for her. and at first he didn't even sound like he was sure that she wasn't coming back so i, I don't know i i didn't think that he had he wasn't holding any ill will towards her at all maybe that yeah, was I more tv than reality i didn't get that feel either from mm-hmm. him and um i i think if he still feels she would be loyal to him he would welcome her back yeah, he's hoping he can count her in a number, right? He was talking about that in, in one of those clips. We'll see. It's certainly the Sandra that we saw this time. I was thinking about everybody's discussions as we went through the listener feedback. I think Brandon from Brooklyn nailed it. Jeremiah mentioned it. Paul's talking about how different Sandra played this time. And so to think that the Sandra that we got to see this time is the Sandra that was there in the others... That I don't think that was the case at but all. But I'm pretty sure that she said she didn't play any differently. They, uh, that's just the edit and what they chose to show. She didn't play any differently. Yeah, I still but I have a hard time believing that. We saw different things. Yeah, yeah, and and we've certainly heard that before, right? Malcolm's famous for talking about how mm-hmm. they had chosen to edit him in the past. And like Paul mentioned, we had seen her being outspoken before and not taking anything from anyone, but certainly not going on and on about how she was in charge. I don't believe she played that way before, that she was calling the shots, even before she had won her second time. and That kind of over-the-top bravado that she had this time. That was great TV and entertaining. It wasn't a strategy necessarily to win. Yeah, the maybe the moment that we saw with her and Sarah and Ozzy and Andrea was reminiscent of how she had played before and very typical. But the other moments they got emphasized in the edit this time, I don't think that was there before. You have to have won twice for some of that to be there. And uh, well, but they, the queen they talk made going on and on. Malcolm look more arrogant this season, even though, like we've said. Only at the beginning. 
I know. Only in the preseason. I know, in the preseason. One preseason video. But I, but I think he even kind of said that uh, that was in part because they knew he went out early, so they edited it that way. And I think that might be some of the same with Sandra. They were heavy on that edit. Maximize these yes, things. Yes, because she went out early. Possibly, but again, there would be no basis for behaving that way in her prior wins. There, well, there's no. no basis for her saying that she well, was the she, queen and always she wasn't in charge. The queen. In her first season. Right. But that's that's at the core of what we got to see, at least this yeah. season. Anyway, she certainly was entertaining, and I've gained more respect for her social game and watching it. We didn't get to see some of these elements of her social game before, at least that I recall. So, like everyone else, I, I think we're going to miss out because she's not going to be on the jury. Going to yeah. miss the insights yeah. there, for sure. Yes, but I there's a, about that. there's a lot of potential left in this season. And it'll be interesting to see if Debbie takes some kind of revenge on Culpepper or Haley. Maybe that extra vote will end up being used against them somehow. We'll see. Anything else you want to say about listener feedback show? Any other insights that you had? I don't believe so. Are you pretty set? You're going to have Varner going out? I probably will. Toe the line? Yeah, probably will. All right. Well, I'm going to get... I'm going to get the correct vote out points, and I'll be I, I'll be having him safe, I'm sure. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see about I that. I think you should definitely put him in safe. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, now for something completely different, to quote Monty Python. Well, well, slightly different because it's related to the show. Kitty Cat got her JSFL side challenge song completed. Now you, you might not recall, but James and Shannon chose Ex Ambassadors Unsteady as the song for Kitty Cat. This is basically the twist that we have with the Survivor Fantasy League side challenge is that the winner of the side challenge chooses a song that the loser of the side challenge has to perform in some nature. So typically they'll take a song and they'll they'll rewrite the lyrics and make them relevant I to that particular say loser. I would say the person that came in last place. Okay, you can sugarcoat it if you want. Anyone other than the people that won are the losers. And all of you losers didn't have to. No, there's really one loser, and it's the one, no. like in this case... It's just and, the one in last place. And this is good. Good, You know, Jody can role play a little and get ready for this role or you this could. season. Right? <laughs> so here's Kitty Cat from last season, ex-ambassador... So she wrote us some lyrics relevant to Millennials versus Gen All right, X go to, the, kitty cat. to the lyrics, not the not the chorus. So here we go. Okay, guys, here goes nothing with the losing song from the side challenge last season. Not what I wanted, but my best shot. Here I go. What Gen X Millennials trust cluster? What does that mean here? What does that mean here? Who? Gen X, millennials, muty idol fever, idol fever, crazy, no food, hot sun, frenzy, water, alliance, survivor stories, revere, crazy, no food, who can I trust to take me far, Gen X, millennials, Goats will not be big fat liars. Hold on, outlast, outplay, dress must last, outwit, outplay, time, go fast. And I apologize that that is not exactly what James and Shannon asked for, and I'm sorry. But Stacey, I'm not your security blanket this time, so maybe next time you will get to bless us with something. Thank you. Kitty cat out. <laughs> All right, good job. Yeah, way to complete your task there. All right, your debt is paid. I like. I think you got some of the lilting back and forth of the main lyrics of the song there. You you did a good job in capturing That's that. That's not and an certainly, easy song. That is a tough song. This is a really tough song, and the chorus has a real signature falsetto to it that's super hard to do so bravo good job kitty cat and uh jody you're up next oh leave jody alone <laughs> oh we want to thank everybody who participated in the listener feedback show thank all you newbies good job your first time out and uh thanks for sending in your thoughts and predictions this week 
We enjoyed that. You made us laugh. You made us think, as always. We also want to say a big thanks to Jarrett for your donation. Greatly appreciate that. and Put that towards our operating costs. Thank you very much. Don't forget to get your picks in before the deadline on Wednesday. I, I was the closest I've ever been this week, I think. For, I only had like an hour or less to get my picks in. Because you waited and waited and waited before you made I your big mistake. I was busy and, and busy lost points. and busy and couldn't decide. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, there we well, go. I the thought, truth right there at the end. The truth is, as I thought Sandra would go and I just couldn't make myself do it. I see. And I didn't want it to be so. Oh, I want to play Survivor with someone like you. So, you want to play Survivor? <laughs> that won't make the choice in their best interest. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, uh, now if they saw that it, look. Anything else? Yeah. Which look? Me laughing and smiling or your look? My look <laughs> Because your look you. was definitely While different. you're laughing and oh, smiling Oh, you're talking about me. on the, the live feed that you won't do. That yes. I won't do, yes. Because... Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that in my pajamas. You could. <laughs> well, it I would could. just be your choice. That's true, I could. Mm. Mm. Is my hair standing on, you know. All right. You ready fake? for another episode? I sure am. Totally. Can't wait. Have a good one. Have a good weekend.